This is CES Tech Talk. I'm James Kotecki, bringing you a C-Space Studio interview from CES 2024 with one of my favorite guests, Duncan Crabtree Ireland, is the National Executive Director and Chief Negotiator of SAG-AFTRA. That's the actors union whose recent strike put a spotlight on the role of AI in creative work. I think you're really gonna enjoy this conversation. And after you do, make sure you check out the SAG-AFTRA podcast, hosted by none other than Duncan Crabtree Ireland himself. As you're about to hear, Duncan is thoughtful and passionate about how AI and other technology impacts art and commerce and humanity. So listen here, listen there, listen up. It's Duncan Crabtree Ireland. Welcome back to the C-Space studio here at CES 2024. I am James Kotecki, joined by one of my favorite guests. We've talked so many times yeah. over the years at CES, and we're glad to have you back. Duncan Crabtree Ireland, the executive, National Executive Director and Chief Negotiator of SAG-AFTRA. Thank you so much for coming back. Hey, thanks so much for having me. It's great to see you as always. Wow, well, since we chatted last year, SAG-AFTRA has had quite a year. Yes. You are the union that represents, among other folks, actors, and these actors went on strike last year. I I believe it was about four months, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. you might have heard of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's so right. you were all yeah. over, yeah, I was like, I know that guy. And he was, <laughs> you were all over the news, obviously. Now you're back. AI was a big factor in that strike. So I want to start by just kind of contextualizing for folks kind of what AI protections, what the issues were, what the protections that were won as a result of that strike. Kind of, can you give us a status update? Yeah, sure. And let me just say, James, you know, CES helped us identify AI as the issue was going to become and helped us do it years before we actually had to launch into this negotiation. That's right. You and I have so talked about we, issues like this yeah. for years. And I was like, oh, I, I know why he's concerned yeah, about that. Yeah, we really have. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so, you know, last year at CES, we had a panel track of called Future Shock, and it was all about AI and its impact on the entertainment industry. Yeah. And little did we know that with Within months of that, we would end up actually having to go on strike in order to make sure that the protections that our members need would be enshrined in the contract with the major studios and the streamers. But those protections really revolve around what we call informed consent and fair compensation. And what that really means is that when an actor is going to have their image, voice, likeness, or performance replicated using AI technology, or really any technology, um, that they should have the right to know what that's going to be. And, and that consent can't just be some boilerplate sentence. It has to mean, we know what you're going to do with our image. We are OK with that. We're giving you permission to recreate us in that way. And then that people need to be paid fairly for doing that. And so if I were to preserve a performance and then use it a few years later in a different context, I need to go back to that person and get consent again for that different kind of use. Yeah, but we're even yeah. talking about not just the performance. We're talking about these companies are creating a digital replica mm. of a person. Yeah. And so they yes. can create an entirely different performance that you never gave. And you know, I mean, mm -hmm. there's a de facto consent when you're yeah. an actor on a set. Because if you're being asked to say something, you know you're saying it. Right. And you can say, I'm not going to say that, or I'm not going to do that. But if they've got a replica of you and they can make it do whatever they want, then that has to be protected contractually and legally because you're not there to protect it yourself. And how much of this was about protecting the future and how much of this is about things that are actually happening right now? Your, your actors are back at work. Are they seeing these kinds of things already bubbling up? Oh, absolutely. This is, this is something that, for the actors in particular, this is something that's already happening. I mean, there's some high profile examples, obviously, Carrie Fisher in the Star Wars movies, yeah. Paul Walker, Fast and mm -hmm. Furious, and other examples too. But many of our members have been scanned uh, to create the kind of uh, data that's necessary to create a convincing digital replica. And so this is something that our members felt had to be dealt with right now. It could mm -hmm. not wait because this is happening today, not tomorrow. Um, you are a negotiator. And so I want to, if, if I could, ask you to kind of maybe not take the opposite side, but at least give me the opposite perspective. What were the studios saying about AI? What were, what were, I, were they kind of dismissive of it? This isn't that big of a deal. How were, how were they thinking about it in, in, in this conversation? Well, I, I think that they were not quite ready <laughs> for this, to okay. be honest with you. And you know, some of them are using this technology already. Some of them aren't. They're not all in the same place. And so I think they weren't quite ready for how important this issue was mm -hmm. uh, to us. That became immediately apparent. We started negotiations. This was one of our very first proposals on the first day of bargaining. And it was the very last proposal that was finalized on day 118 of our strike. And so I think the reality is the companies were concerned about locking themselves into something they didn't fully understand or anticipate. Mm. And they're also concerned about competition coming from companies that are outside of the entertainment industry, companies like OpenAI or companies like even 
and Google. Right. Um, and they're concerned about limiting themselves too much in a potential future competition with those companies. And so let's talk about that a little bit more because you've obviously, you've made a deal with the studios, but in a world where companies in the United States, beyond the borders of the United States, anywhere around the world, could be theoretically, as we've talked over the years, very easily and increasingly easily because of the way that technology is advancing, create digital replicas, create digital copies with or without consent. Um, how, do you, how do you approach that world and, and your positioning within it, um, given that you've made a very important uh, breakthrough deal with these folks, but there's other people who are going to be maybe trying to do some of the things you're trying to prevent? Absolutely, I mean, it's a two-step process, right? There's collective bargaining, and our members, I mean, I think you could see from how they you know, turned out for the picket lines and the 98% strike vote, our members aren't going to work for companies that don't have you know, acceptable, ethical, respectful deals signed. Yeah. So then the issue becomes, what about companies that are doing things without consent? And that's where the public policy side comes in. And we have a bill currently pending in Congress called the No Fakes Act, which is going to establish a right for performers and all of us actually, mm -hmm. in our name, image, likeness, uh, so that when companies try to steal our image, steal a performance, steal our face, steal our voice, we have a enforceable legal right under federal law mm -hmm. that we can use to prevent that. So it's a, yeah. it's a, you know, it's kind of a mosaic that has to be mm -hmm. put together to make sure that everyone's protected. And right now, is there any law that would protect such a thing if it were to happen today? There's law on state at some states. About half of the states have what are called rights of publicity laws that mm -hmm. protect against commercial misappropriation of your image and likeness. But there is no federal law. Yeah. And clearly, with something like this, we need federal law. And frankly, ultimately, we need international norms too. Yeah. Um, how do you think about? And I guess one of the answers is you, you came to see, yes, but how do you think about, I mean, the strike is a, a, a three-year authorization coming out of the strike, a three-year deal, is that well, right? Well, it's actually about a two and a half year deal oh, because of the strike okay. itself, so So, yeah. so yeah. in another two and a half years, you might have to go back to the, the negotiating table again. Technology just keeps advancing, right? You, you, and so how did you put in place this framework for like, all right, we kind of know what AI is doing now, but we have to be ready for things that we aren't even necessarily sure are going to happen in two, year, two and a half years. Yeah, I mean, we know it's going to be evolutionary. In fact, yeah. just this morning, we announced here at CES a deal with a company called Replica Studios, which creates digital voice replicas for use by video game companies. Mm -hmm. And so we announced a, a, just a groundbreaking deal with them. Their CEO is here with me this morning signing the deal and announcing it. Yeah. And um, that's all about providing even a, the next level, the next evolution of protection for actors working in voice work yeah. for video games. And that includes things like transparency, that includes things like time limitations on the use of replicas, all kinds of other pieces. So mm -hmm. the reality is when you are in the business of collecting bargaining, it is always something that you evolve over cycles of <laughs> negotiation. And we'll, one of the things I'm really proud of in our deal with the studios and streamers is we have a right to meet with them every six months to find out what they're doing in AI in general and specifically with generative AI. Okay. So we'll have that information for our next round of bargaining, which will be here sooner than we know it. Um, given those meetings, I'm not sure if the first of those meetings has happened yet, but is there anything interesting that you want to highlight either from something you're worried about or just something that's cool that studios are able to do with generative AI right now? <laughs> well, the first of those meetings won't be until June of this coming of this year, of mm -hmm. 2024, so I don't really have anything to say about what's come up in those meetings yet, but I, I will say that we had really, really deep conversations with the studios as part of this negotiation, and I feel like there is a higher degree of understanding about the concerns that actors have, mm -hmm. and I think there's going to be a recognition that people are going to stand up for themselves. No one is going to let themselves be walked over in this new you know, world of AI. And as a union, we're here to bring people together to accomplish that. And speaking of the union, you mentioned video games. And uh, I believe there's a strike authorization. So the folk, for video game performers aren't on strike now. They potentially could be on strike soon. Any yeah. update there? Yeah, I mean, we're still talking with the major video game companies, the video game studios. This replica deal that we announced this morning hopefully will help give them a a, a, a road path, like a roadmap mm -hmm. to how we can get to a deal with them. They know what it is we need yeah. done, they just haven't been willing to do it yet. If that is not done in short order, then it is quite possible we could be on strike against the video game companies in, in the course of the next uh, four to eight weeks. All right, uh, your work is uh, never done. Never um, done. <laughs> be, uh, beyond AI, and it's almost silly to say beyond AI, because AI is just kind of infusing everything here at CES. Are there other, but, but since we are at CES, are there any other kind of technologies that you have your eye on here? Absolutely, I mean, I think VR is finally poised to sort of come into its own. Obviously, really excited to see the you know, Apple Vision Pro be yeah. released, uh, getting a chance to actually try out the, the Meta Quest 3 right here mm -hmm. at CES this time. And I think, you know, with these advances in technology, especially if the price points become more 
you know, feasible for the mass marketplace, yeah. it could finally uh, be sort of taking its place. And that's really important to our members because VR becomes a whole new platform for the possible use uh, of and exploitation of digital replicas, for example, but yeah. also just opportunities to expand upon their work. Um, one thing I have always found interesting about our conversations is that although they, on, on some level, may seem to deal with you know the concerns of, of Hollywood actors, actually it's kind of like a canary in the coal mine situation, or like the experiences and the, the concerns that you have could impact a lot of other people in a lot of other different workplaces and professions. And so, as a union that just went on strike about issues of AI in the workplace generally, do you have any uh, kind of closing advice or thoughts to other people who are just wrestling with these concerns, either as employers, employees? Concerned citizens about AI employment and the future of humanity. I'm putting a lot of pressure yeah, on you with this no. question. I just keep stacking up the pressure. Yeah, it's a great question. I take a chance to just say, you know, we have our Labor Innovation and Technology Summit that we do with the AFL-CIO every year. It's our fifth year doing it this year, mm -hmm. and we have hundreds of union delegates from all across the country here for that ex exact purpose. But what I would say to employers is, you know. If you take an ethical approach, an ethical and responsible approach to your implementation and adoption of AI, that is a path to success. Um, you can see what will happen it, when companies ignore the human impact of technological you know, adaptation, and especially things like AI. What comes of that is the kind of thing we just experienced with this massive disruption of the entertainment industry for six months between the Writers Guild and us. Yeah. So that didn't have to happen. And if companies step forward and partner with workers to help envision a future where people are lifted up and where AI serves us and we don't serve AI, I think there's a really bright future there. A great optimistic note to end us on. Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, SAG-AFTRA, thanks so much for coming back thanks, as always. James. And we look forward to talking to you again. Absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation from CES 2024. And if that struck a chord, make sure to check out the SAG After podcast on all the usual podcast channels. That's our show for now, but there's always more tech to talk about. So hit that YouTube subscribe button, leave a comment, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia, or wherever you're getting this show. And get more CES at ces.tech. That's ces.tech. I'm James Kotecki, Talking Tech on CES Tech Talk.